Hi everyone, Jules from Tarot Adventures with Jules here. I am going to be chatting with Sarah from Calling Corners in Truro, Nova Scotia. It's about an hour from me. Um, for those of you that don't know, it is a fabulous metaphysical shop. Um, they ship, I believe, uh, to US and Canada and uh, are utterly fabulous. I'm just going to send a little invite to Sarah here. Yeah, if you haven't uh, checked them out yet, definitely do. Sarah has an amazing selection of books and crystals and candles and decks. And that is the shop in the background. Yay! <laughs> I'll give you my face. There we go. <laughs> Yay! So good to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, so thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, it's my absolute pleasure. I'm so thrilled to have an opportunity to chat with you. Um, so what's in your mug? um coffee 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 yeah well, I'm like falling asleep so yeah yeah me too i um i was like maybe i should do tea because that would maybe be the smarter choice but i actually want to stay awake this evening so right? <laughs> um what's what's your uh coffee favorite coffee preparation method or way of having it Ooh, uh my favorite way of having it is with whatever the seasonal silk is which i don't have right now but like you know like pumpkin spice or now they have the uh, peppermint mocha i think is the new one and then just uh mm -hmm. probably like a dark roast with that oh yeah yeah oh, that sounds amazing yeah i do uh, i do like half uh pour over my dominic does like the full pour over 16 ounce but i do like half a pour over and then i add half frothed um homemade almond milk um Nice. And uh, sometimes we add some flavoring. Like I've got, I got some syrups actually from um, coffee shop in Truro. I'm blanking on the name now. The drive through. Oh, like um, and donuts. Yeah, that's a couple great ones. Yeah, uh, Aroma Maya to go. Aroma probably. Yeah, that's the yeah one. they're great. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because we had gotten their pumpkin spice roast a little while ago, so I really enjoyed that. And I was combining it with their dulce de leche syrup. And then they also have like a cinnamon one and a rose one. And I really want to get the peppermint for the holidays. But it's been fun kind of swapping everything out and adding a little bit of something special. I was yeah. thinking of getting some syrups too. So maybe I'll go there. Yeah. 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 Their selection is great. They have another one that's like a holiday blend. I can't remember what they call it. I got it when I was in town last. And it's really good. It's kind of hard to pinpoint the flavor other than it tastes festive so like I it's not it. distinctly peppermint or distinctly like yeah it just tastes like the holidays for whatever reason I don't know what magic they put in there but it's pretty fabulous <laughs> oh yeah one of my favorite tastes is the holidays so yeah, I know, right? oh, yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm actually admittedly not a pumpkin spice latte fan like I love pumpkin desserts and like pumpkin spice in all baked goods but I don't prefer it in coffee for whatever reason. So the Dolce de Leche was like a really nice way or like brown sugar flavoring is really nice. Mm -hmm. That like yeah. that would be up my alley for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I just, uh, I saw Johanna and they Tris just joined us too. So hi to you both. Yes. Hello. Oh, it's so great. Um, yeah. So, Sorry, my dog is very vocal. Um, anytime anyone so far as walks past our house, he's like on high. Yeah. Shut the door because um, everybody's actually out at the um, holiday parade. It's uh, so uh, Addie's walking in the parade, and oh, I miss you too, Joe. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she's walking in the parade, and then Armand and Eloise and Dominic are going to wave her on, so that's very exciting. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. That's so, cool. um, yeah, it's really early this year. I was told it was this early last year as well, but I, I don't remember. Um, I was anticipating it would be December sometime, but I feel like everything has kind of crept early and, earlier and earlier in the last couple of years. Probably Definitely. Like, yeah, that's a way yeah. to get festivities going. Yeah. Okay, I gotta ask you something. How are how do you how are you how do you keep your your 
video is static. I'm just hand holding this, but I've never done it okay. before. So just, I want a pro tip. Yeah, well, I've got a ring light set up and it comes with a stand. I got it on Amazon um, and it's just like a basic stand with a ring light and it's got a little phone thing. So I just like oh, nice. my phone up and you can adjust Very the good. height. So it's really helpful because otherwise I'd be like, this constantly yeah I'm Blair, Blair witching it here so sorry everyone <laughs> if it's a little yeah yeah I'm sorry it's so dark in the background I was playing around with lighting but the overhead light is like super glary so I just left that off so we're going with kind of mood lighting um I love it <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm so curious to ask you um I I want to ask about the shop but first before that I feel like going back to basics like when did you first get into tarot and metaphysical stuff? Because I feel like that's probably a precursor to the shop. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so um, originally, originally, this is probably not a unique tale. But of course, yeah. when the craft came out when I was in elementary school, yeah. that kind of made me be like, oh, there's other stuff out there going on. I'm a weird girl. What's up? <laughs> this, this is for me. Yeah. So that was my initial um, kind of introduction to it. Yeah. And uh, so then I was going to the library getting like whatever books I could find, which at the time was nothing. And and yeah. a lot of the time I w had to like kind of sneak over to the like adult section of the library and because there wasn't much in the way of Wicca for children. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's kind of where I started. And of course, you know, we have like Rachel True and the actual uh, actors from that who have real lives in tarot and mm -hmm. uh Feruza Bach and, and Wicca and stuff like that so following them actually helped a lot too and then mm -hmm. I kind of moved out of it as you kind of go through that ebb and flow I find it's pretty common when I yeah. speak to people about that yeah and then when I was in my 20s again I kind of picked everything back up in a more um intense way sunk my teeth back in mm -hmm. um I I think you I kind of know you anyway because we we've known each other for but you kind of know that my background's in film as well yeah. so I would work in production offices in film which is like pretty hardcore like um shifts and isn't always so great for the mental health and so I was yeah. kind of going through like a spot where it was like um I couldn't really rely on my uh on my brain at the yeah. time and yeah. so yeah totally so I was just I couldn't rely I couldn't trust my brain I couldn't rely on that so I was looking for some sort of respite and so for some, whatever reason I kind of got called back in it was like just a little series of things that kept happening um yeah. little signs you kind of remember probably from your own experiences you pick up on those little signs and so I started going back and picking up a few crystals and, you know, starting small and picking up some books and stuff. At the time, of course, it was uh, Little Mysteries was the big shop and mm -hmm. uh, in Halifax, which was such an inspiration even back in the day because they'd been yeah. around for a while. And uh, I remember even um, when I was younger, I wrote a script that when I was like young, young, like a teenager, I guess mm -hmm. I wrote a script about that shop and I went and I was like I wrote a script about you guys and they're like that's really cute but I probably were weirded out but they were very sweet about it um but yeah so I started collecting again um in my early 20s and sort of rekindling that and that really helped I don't know for everyone but it really helped me kind of get the rest that my brain needed at the time and kind of leaning on that spirituality Mm -hmm. And then kind of in the interim, your brain kind of heals up. And then it was just a helpful way of getting me back on my feet. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so yeah. that's how it kind of came about again. And that's kind of when I got more into tarot because of course I always knew about tarot from movies, like whether you're, you're looking at something like the craft or another one for me that was big, which is almost blink if you miss it was the people under the stairs. I don't know if you saw that the horror movie. I have the seen I'm not a good horror movie person. I'm far more entertaining for the people watching with me because I'm so reactive and I freak out and like jump scares are the worst. Like I felt so sure. bad the other night because my son, like I think he thought it was my daughter coming up the stairs, but like I came up the stairs and he jumped out from behind a corner and I just like lost it. I was so freaked out. And we just oh. like, like, laugh about it afterwards, but I'm like the most reactive person. <laughs> so oh that one long story short i haven't seen that one but um i'll have to look it up because i am intrigued it's very yeah. it's it's a horror movie but it's it's quite yeah. sweet like it's got a lot of heart and yeah. the sister in it um the main character's sister uh 
does tarot at the beginning and i always remember being really intrigued by that scene and just being like oh there's something like very magical about this stuff yeah, yeah. and then the first deck i got um when i kind of reconnected in my 20s was of course like the universal weight just the pocket one so i could kind of carry it around yeah and kind of went from there but that was the beginning for me what about you i don't know if i ever heard your like beginning yeah um it was kind of two-tiered like the first the first kind of intro i had to it i went to see a psychic when i was like 18 and she used tarot cards and actually a few years after that she found our cat when he went missing uh wes oh, wow. which so you'll you'll know this he um we had moved locations because my parents were moving but staying at another location in between and so we let him be an outdoor cat for like two weeks and then he got lost for another two weeks and I ended up going to see the psychic and she's like, oh, is he a black cat? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, he has a pouch under his belly that goes back and forth. I'm like, uh, yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, he's not far. He's like within a couple blocks. I'm like, oh, well, we're on a really busy street. So is it like the other side of the busy street or is it our side? She's like, your side and it's close to construction. And I was like, uh, okay. And then we were supposed to go to a movie. Movie didn't work out. So we got home and my mom's like, oh, well, there's a park like a couple blocks away. Do you want to check it? Sure enough, we're driving by the park. There's construction on the right-hand side, and there's Wes on the porch of the house. And I called oh, her and yeah. it over. So I think we were her claim to fame for several years because I went back to see her, like, yeah, after that. I think I went to see her total three times. Um, but she had used tarot cards, and I was intrigued. Right. So I went to this small metaphysical shop down on 10th Street in Calgary, and um, it was, like, the Mystic Fairy Tarot, and I, like, dabbled in that. But then a few years, many years later – when I was pregnant with my second daughter, um, I had a friend over and I dabbled back and forth and I just had this really strong intuitive pull that I needed to pull my deck out. And mm -hmm. I did, did this reading and the two things I got from it was that I needed to trust my intuition and the thing I was most afraid of wouldn't be as bad as I feared. And without missing a beat, I'm like, I'm afraid this kid's gonna come early because I've been under ridiculous amounts of stress. Mm -hmm. um, my friend left at noon and Addie was born at 8 37 that night like seven weeks early and wow. it wasn't until the next day when I was sitting in the hospital room that I was like oh I got the messages exactly what I needed to get when I needed it to be able to weather this in a way that made sense to me and yeah. and then over the next two years I kind of dabbled back and forth and then I, I guess about eight years ago I got into it really intensely and started like picked up a copy of the wild unknown and just started mm -hmm. doing deep immersion but it's kind of been a companion for me for a really long time like off and on and like you said about sorry I'm gonna let Pippin in He's yeah of course me. yeah um, as you said it's been a real source of comfort for me like it really has helped me manage my mental health like that and my yoga practice has really helped me kind of regain equilibrium and find solace I mean especially through COVID like that was really a lifeline for me being able to come back to the cards every day and kind of you know, decipher where I was at through the lens of those 78 cards, right? It's amazing how those practices really help ground you in those moments of stress and tension. And Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I played That's a lot with them during COVID. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so then how did you end up, like, how did Calling Corners come to be? Like, what was the journey with getting the shop up and running? What kind of set the spark of inspiration to get that started for you like yeah what was the story behind that because you started yeah. in 2015 right that was your opening 2015 we opened yeah <laughs> I would say 2014 I spent prepping like doing research yeah, yeah. uh seeing what I wanted to say like yeah. seeing who I wanted to like kind of pull in because mm -hmm. at the time like I it wasn't that long ago like it'll be eight years in April so we're at like what seven and a half years like a lot has changed right like yes. the landscape is so different now yeah um but so back then it was weird because i didn't even really know like even some of my close friends like didn't know i was into like paganism and wicca and an eclectic yeah. wiccan and and doing that stuff mm -hmm. um and you kind of think you're the only one you know because we didn't have like there wasn't there wasn't a ton of connection like there was a few mm -hmm. groups like in the city mostly and stuff like that yeah. But it was more like a physical thing. It wasn't like mm -hmm. there wasn't all these Facebook groups and stuff that there were now. At least they weren't as prevalent. Yeah. So you kind of think you're the only one. And I was like, I need to find kind of like a like a lighthouse of sorts because I, yeah. I can't possibly be like the only one. And of yeah. course, I learned that I'm one of thousands and thousands, <laughs> like even just yeah. locally. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so 2014 was kind of my 
brainstorm. Mm -hmm. The idea came, I was just sort of like, so the way that my previous life worked with film was, you know, it's seasonal. So you do a show, you get off a show, you kind of do nothing or you do something else, whatever the person's life, however it involves mine. I did a lot of nothing in that office. Um, so I was like, how can I incorporate all this stuff that's really been helpful to like my mental health and my like spiritual life and um, really stepping into my power? Because that was another huge element for me is I had zero confidence. Like I still, <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent great with confidence. It's not like my forte or anything, but like it was to a point where like I would get um, jealous of people that exerted more confidence. Do you know what I mean? I just didn't have any, any sort of. And um, so witchcraft especially helped me build that confidence, like very, yeah. very much, like just practicing and seeing results or, or just like trusting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it was a lot of that, but sorry, I'm kind of getting off track, but um, 2014 was a lot of that, just like building yeah. those and figuring that out. Um, and then I was just like, how can I kind of merge my world so I don't necessarily have to go on this start stop journey with film where I'm not feeling yeah. very um, alive, really. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you know, at the time, Tro didn't have like any sort of metaphysical, we had a lot of yoga studios. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but you know, like yoga and stuff like that was, mm-hmm. was sort of like around. So it wasn't like unheard of. Yeah, but uh, we didn't have a metaphysical store. Not like I envisioned in my head, like uh, something like Little Mysteries, which was so brilliant in its time. Um, yeah. I mean, it's no, it's no longer around for anyone who who might be wondering. Unfortunately, it's not. But um, yeah, so I just was like, if I merge the two worlds by making a spot here, then maybe I could attract people that kind of feel like me, kind of make that lighthouse like yeah. beacon set off and. So I kind of started going through the steps of what that looked like, how you might do it and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It that sort of, it just sort of snowballed from there. Like, I mean, really snowballed. Like mm-hmm. um, I, even the spot we're in, like uh, the spot, mm-hmm. I love this location so much. Um, and I remember driving by when we were sort of thinking about it and I was collecting like, my information and stuff and I was like wow at the time it was a used clothing store and I was just like wow that would that would be the spot if I you know and two weeks later it was vacant and I was like oh yeah for I felt bad because I was like did I did I do that (laughs) but but two weeks later it was vacant so I was like okay okay this is a sign and um we got it and we just started building from there Really? Yeah. So that, that's how it came about. And sure enough, it didn't take long for me to start seeing people that like felt like they were kind of experiencing similar things to me and, yeah, and uh, getting to talk to them and stuff. So yeah, and it all came together pretty quickly, which was amazing too. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Once you hit the zone with things like that, the serendipity of it and the synchronicity never ceases to amaze me. It's like you have this kind of you know, little nugget of an idea. And then all of a sudden things kind of come together in ways you hadn't necessarily expected. And I I don't know, but I think like I came out of the tarot closet for lack of a better term in November of 2019, uh, just pre COVID. I was in health and wellness and everything and extricated myself from that. Thank goodness. Pre COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's just such a toxic industry. Um, Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that I did it when I did because I didn't realize how much I was going to need the community. And one of the things that I think surprised me so much about the tarot metaphysical community is, I mean, it, Instagram algorithms being what they are, it's kind of gone down a little bit in the last little while. But mm-hmm. the sense of community and connection and support that I found within this community specifically is so different yeah. from anything else that I've experienced. And I've gotten to meet some people in person that I've gotten to know through the community. And it's been so magical to, you know, you you feel a lot less alone when you know that there's other people out there that are not the same things that you are and exploring practices and different aspects of spirituality and tarot. And I mean, it's functioned as a form of therapy for me, like no joke in the last little while. I always say to Dominic, like I could pick any card out of the 78 and use it to make sense of what's going on for me currently. But the synchronicity of happening to pull the death card when I'm having to release something or, you know, temperance or two of pentacles when I'm dealing with, you know, issues around balance and recalibration. Like it's really, 
the synchronicity of that is really magical and it's it's absolutely yeah it is it is i i totally agree and it's interesting in the different ways that it works too Mm -hmm. um with tarot it doesn't always for me at least it doesn't always um articulate itself to me in the same way every time yes which is so phenomenal and it's and it's really like if you're if you're if anyone kind of is a little on the fence about whether they want to kind of lean into kind of believing what cards have to say Mm -hmm. when you start seeing patterns like that and you start seeing um how it's communicating just with you Mm -hmm. oh it's it's pretty powerful stuff um the most intense one happened to me um are you familiar with stella tarot stella's tarot no, I'm not. It's an out of print deck. Um, it's it has kind of, uh, I want to say it's like a pre Raphaelite, but also okay. collage sort of vibe. And I think it's out of print now, but I managed to get a copy of it before it went out of print. A couple, well, probably, I, I think about four years ago. Yep. And what I, uh, it, it became one of my favorite decks. And one mm-hmm. of the things about it is the court cards are not. They're just slightly different, so it'd be like they have prince and princess and stuff like this, um, rather than like a uh, page and knight, right? Yeah. And uh, it was really interesting because I had a dog. I don't know. I might have had him when you were around too at some points, but uh, Alfonso and he passed away, and it was the first time like I had a uh, pet death or experienced that as something that was my animal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a family animal. It was mine. And it was very difficult. So when I was going, I got these little necklaces and urns for the ashes. And so before I did, I was like, no, I was, I never handled that sort of stuff before. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pull a card to kind of like navigate me through this before I put the Mm -hmm. ashes into like the, the things that I had purchased. Yeah. And, uh, this is so cheesy, but I'm sure I'm not the only person that's that does this. But I used to always call him um, my little prince or my handsome prince, something around the word prince. And I'd also do this thing where I'd – because he was a boss and he had that, like, silly barrel chest, you know what I mean? And I'd put my hand on his chest and i put my other hand on my chest and I'd be like, our hearts are together. And I'd do this all the time. And so when I was pulling the card, it was, like, really tough or whatever. But, you know, I got the Prince of Cups. Of course. And I was just like, oh, it's like he's telling me our hearts are together. Oh, my God. So, oh, my God. I'm sorry. But, yeah. Like, I have my pup as well, and we have a couple of kitties, too. And I've lost a couple of animals over the years, and it's, it's heartbreaking. And it's just oh, yeah. like I still have an emotional response now to things oh, that have totally. been, you know, many, many years ago. Because the bond that you have with animals is so precious. Totally. And, but yeah, it's incredible with tarot, the things that come up like that, like the, right. of the cards and like the messaging and stuff. It's, yes. it's really quite magical. And I, I still find myself shocked by that, even though I've been practicing for so long. Yeah. It's still, it's still incredible, to, incredible to me what comes through, you know, and I, I don't know about you, but sometimes too, like I'll go into something. Oftentimes I want, like I use a ton of spreads and I use my daily prompts and stuff, but yeah. Sometimes I'll come into something and just see what comes up because often I find if I'm like asking about a specific question, what comes out is something related to something completely different Mm -hmm. that I need to address. Or like if there's something that I'm resisting, the cards will bring it up for me. And there's something about seeing it concrete in front of you in the form of these pieces of paper, essentially that forces me to face up to it. Like if there's something that I've been avoiding and then all of a sudden a card will come up and it's like, yep, this is a reminder. You got to deal with this. You know, Yes. Oh, absolutely. It brings up the things that, you know, you need to face up to whether you want to or not. Right. Like it's it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Do you have um, a card that you look for um, in every deck that kind of might, be the make or break for that deck like it almost like a favorite card or something yeah i i find i i used to do that a lot because when i first started there was certain imagery that was jarring for me and like for instance in the wild unknown the death card is like a decomposing bird and oftentimes like the death card or the ten of swords or three of swords can be quite 
um, graphic in some cases. Now I feel like my my bandwidth for that is so much wider that I yeah. don't worry about it quite so much. But initially when I went in, like if something was like too dark or too jarring, I think for me now, I really gravitate towards decks that are more gender neutral. It's not so much yeah. divine feminine or divine masculine. And there's a lot of decks now that are looking at pushing past gender binaries in terms of court cards as well. So I often yeah. will seek out things that aren't specifically gendered and it gives a more expansive perspective on tarot because yeah you know i'm of the mind that tarot should be for everyone and everyone should be able to see themselves represented so even in terms of what i'm sharing on my feed i feel like the more accessible i can make it the better um so yeah. i guess rather than specific cards i look for more of a theme sure. i've actually found that i'm gravitating a lot towards nature decks now because it feels like it's a lot a much more neutral kind of playing field in terms of yeah. being able to look at the tarot as something that is closer to you and more accessible i mean that being said like the fifth spirit tarot is incredible it's one of my favorites this is the guidebook which is like a it's worth its weight in gold i love it so much um yeah how about you is there a specific card that you look for or? um you know i haven't done it in years but i do look for i know you know i'm a swords person that's yeah. my that's so my suit you. for sure yeah. um so yeah, two of swords. When I first saw the two yeah. of swords, I was like, oh, that's me in a card. And I didn't even really have a context for it. Mm -hmm. And I still feel that way. So yeah, I'll definitely always check out the two of swords, even to this day. Um, yeah. Like I said, I haven't really been perusing decks for myself lately. Mm -hmm. So not so much lately, but yeah. certainly before I'm putting something in my own collection, I do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to stocking the shop, like how do you determine what you want to carry like are there specific creators or artists that you look for i mean i know you carry a range of indie decks as, along with mass market and you've got an amazing selection of books and crystals and so how, you. Did you, how did you approach that like in terms of what you wanted to carry who you wanted to feature like were there certain artists that you or creators that you started with or that you discovered along the way like what, what's that process like and yeah so, so um in terms of tarot, which is kind of like, uh, our shop is kind of shaped like an L. So I'm like, I'm the tarot part of the L. And then a couple of the other folks that work here are like crystal oriented and stuff, um, which is a goal of mine to kind of reacquaint myself with the crystals this next year. But um, for tarot, it started with I wanted the basics. So like, yeah. I wanted somebody to be able to come in and just be like, I'm a noob. What can I get? Yeah. And so just sort of anything like Rider weight, of course, anything in that template we'd have. Cause I mean, most of the guidebooks at the time, especially were based on, excuse me, Rider weight and, yeah. and that like the picture references. Yeah. So a lot of those. And then from there, I started to discover indie decks. The first one I ever brought in and the, when I started kind of, realized it was a thing was mm -hmm. the dark exact by coleman okay. stevenson yeah but i actually did an interview with coleman back in the day just like um a written one on my yep. old blog for the mm -hmm. store but that's <laughs> we we really we've redone our website so that i don't think that exists anymore but it was really cool mm -hmm. to talk um and get their pers perspective on that sort of stuff but um that was the first one we brought in and from there, I wanted to bring in stuff kind of like you said, where uh, folks could just kind of see themselves, no matter how abstract or literal that might be, in yeah. deck. And of course, as you kind of navigated the last seven years of the tarot landscape, that yeah. came a lot from the indie creators because they weren't seeing themselves in, in these um, mass market decks. So, so we started kind of going down the rabbit hole with folks that were creating decks like the uh numinous uh, tarot i think it was called yes. cloud, right yes yeah oh, i love their work they have an oracle deck coming out actually yes. next year the yeah. um, all food based and i cannot wait it's incredible their art style is awesome okay. it's it's just so fun and and um mm -hmm. it almost kind of sparkles or there's something about it that just really mm -hmm. like feels alive um yeah. and what other ones were really kind of interesting i mean we brought in so many over the years and you know we are uh, the valida 
Terra, yep. which doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. Um, that's out of print. The Oracle you can still get, of course, but if, that's yeah. more of like a, so it's like a floral thing. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just started following the trail of like artists that I thought were cool. And uh, what was it? This Might Hurt Tarot was another yeah. big one. Yeah. Um, probably one of our newer ones we got. I actually have the Faye and the Ferns Tarot. So that's oh, this cool. one. Ooh, which is yeah it's uh it's an indie too it's um just got a little kind of guidebook that it comes with there but the coloring is so lovely i just it's totally on the backing Ooh, oh my gosh i love that yeah and it's, it's very perfect. nature based as well so i'll just kind of they're probably oh. all similar because i don't know how uh shuffled these ones are this is our <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I love the color palette. That's gorgeous. Yeah, the colors are great. I just spilled them everywhere, but yeah. Um, so yeah. anything like that. Um, the Okanagan Oracle was another fun one that we brought in. Yeah. It reminded me of, you know, Canadiana. So there's just like, I don't know, I kind of go where I'm inspired. And then, of course, um, like influencers and stuff like uh, I get a lot from you now because you're so like you have your finger on the pulse of like all of the stuff going on so I'm like oh this one looks good this one looks fun um so yeah I just kind of go where I'm inspired to go there's not really any more um I'll go to the cabinet let me see if I can change this around so you can kind of see that I'll kind of awesome. see what we have in the way of I love the tarot corner. It's awesome. It's so much fun. Uh, I like to come in and browse and more often than not end up leaving with something fabulous, of course. Right? Oh yeah, gentle tarot. Gentle I love it. tarot. Great books in too. That is such a fabulous resource. Um Yeah. The, 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 is the guy, but I know. Look how yeah. look how big that is. You're getting so much info for that. Yeah. And the artwork in there is absolutely stunning right oh, yeah so many and good ones oh and the witches of legend too this might great hurt. one oh my gosh tarot disassembled um yeah i um i have the guidebook for that and it is yes. incredible. it is such a fabulous resource for tarot tarot symbology um mm -hmm. and actually uh jennifer just launched uh, tarot assembled and it's basically a deck that's based on all of the symbols of tarot individually so there's like a feather card and an armor card so like everything that you find in tarot and then all this on the sides of the card she's got the cards that it's associated with which is a right. really cool way to cross reference yeah but it's, I it's love the deck yeah. yeah such a clever way of educating and using the cards you know oh my goodness, it really is oh amazing yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's some of some of yours as well. We got in the back there still. So. Awesome. Yeah. This one's great too. Many queens. I love that one. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that one actually. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, so, awesome. That's all. Yeah, and then we got the fortune queens up there, which are kind of a fun oh, yeah. um, room all awesome. awesome. yeah. yeah, those are fan incredible. One. Yeah, and then okay. we just do the mass markets, which is interesting because I will say that is something that kind of tends to happen, which is interesting, is an interesting okay. problem, which is the indie artists, if they get picked up mm -hmm. by mass market, it's, it can be kind of like you're rooting for them. Yes. But it's, yes. the price point is so different. It kind of is, you yeah. can get this problem where I'm carrying the indie version yeah, but you can get a mass market version for thirty dollars cheaper and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's oh, that. Absolutely. Um, I feel like there's enough of a market though for people that are really looking for the indie versions that yeah, is too much of an issue. There's also a huge issue, as I'm sure you're aware, in the tarot community with like counterfeit decks. Like I know totally. so many that have had their work ripped off and yeah. you know comes in a cheap little tuck box with a QR code. And I mean, I think most people are aware of it. There are some people that will specifically look for that because they don't want to mm -hmm. pay the money. For me, I would rather have like one deck if that was what I could afford and have it be something that was compensating the artist and yes. paying them for the work because I mean, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's fabulous that tarot has become as popular or as mainstream as it has because it's allowed space for so many creators to show up and to share their work and to Absolutely. develop community around it. But then the downside, yeah. because it is perceived as lucrative, then there's this whole kind of 
counterfeit on her belly aspect of it, which is really unfortunate. It um, is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know like um, Charlie Claire, I'm going to come back to this because their work is so amazing, but they had the fifth spirit um, tarot and they're actually releasing it in a mass market edition starting, I think, December 20th. Um, which is great. It's being released, I want to say, through Hay House. I'm not entirely sure. Um, That'll be great for folks, though, yeah. It is. And the deck is, it's interesting because there's minor differences. Like, Charlie Claire, they've been showing a lot of the cards, and there's a slight shift in the color palette. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the color is a little more vibrant. Um, and I know, like, the Queen of, or the King of Cups, rather, is Mr. Rogers in the indie version. And then in the mass market, it's going to be slightly different. And they also have right. another book coming out next year that I am so excited about. I think they just submitted the copy to the publisher within the last week or so, which is, I mean, this this is my go-to tarot book. Like, I I know that they still have some copies on their website. I don't know. I think they're releasing a mass market edition of it, maybe. Um, yeah, I've got to get that book. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Like, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of, it's a double-edged sword because I keep saying that, but it's like, you know, it's great that it's going mass market because, because then it's at a more accessible price point. And also Definitely. it's a bit available for people to be able to access. Right. So, but then there's something about indie decks that's really special and yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm of mixed minds. Like most of my decks I would say are indie, but I do have a number of mass market. I'm just really careful about where I source them. Like I source them from you or shops yeah. as much as I can because yeah. Amazon is a bit of a, well, and there's lots of issues with Amazon. I mean, chapters totally. are a bit more legit, <laughs> but it's, it's always a bit dicey because there is so much counterfeit out there. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I so respect the selection that you have in the shop, not just with the tarot decks, but also with the books that you carry. Like, um, you know, uh, creating your craft. I think you carry this one. I do. Thing. Yeah. I think we might be out yeah. at the moment. I'm gonna okay. peek okay. over, but we do carry that. Yes. Yeah. And I think, ooh, I have one. Yes. This is the one I have at home too. Queer Magic. Yes. I was Which just is lovely. That, um, oh, that's lovely. That's <laughs> Oh, awesome. And Queering, Queer Magic, the author of that, um, who's the author of that one? Oh, uh, oh Thomas Crower. Yes, I just did an interview recently with Cassandra Snow and Siri uh, Vincent Pluff. And I believe Siri Vincent Pluff on their blog has an interview, well, on their podcast, actually. They have a fabulous podcast. Um, they have an interview with uh, with Tomas uh, about all of their books. And now they're on my radar, and I cannot wait to look into them because I hadn't actually heard about them prior to listening to it, but right. it was a great way to find out because that, that book in particular sounded fabulous, but all of their writing sounds just incredible. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like this one um, is by the two of them um, lessons from the Empress. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this yet. I haven't. I want to read it though. So badly. It's fabulous. It's looking at the entirety of tarot through the lens of the Empress and self care and nurturing. And it's, it's fabulous. It's like a, it, it's called a tarot workbook for self-care and creative growth, but it's like, I read it cover to cover before interviewing both of them. And it's, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's really incredible. Um, and such a great resource for self-care. I mean, I feel like the term self-care has become such a kind of token term and there's yes. certain things that you associate with it. Oh, well just like have a bath and, you know, do this, do that, you know, go to a yoga class. And, and sometimes that's not accessible for a lot of people. And yes. it's really nice to have something like this that, you know, is what a $20 book, $16.95 US. Yeah. And it gives you the tools to be able to do that at home when you have time for it. Do you know what I mean? Which is yes. a lot more accessible and it doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it's, it's really, yeah. I, I made a little pile of books cause I thought we might start talking about it. And I was just Aww, like, yeah. Um, this one I agree really with you. That. Yeah. yeah. What one's that? Sorry. Um, Witch's Book of Numbers. Yes. Yeah. It's also fabulous if you're interested in numerology or whatever. And then the other one is um, Claire Goodchild um, from Black and the Moon just published this book of the, the book of se seances. Yes. And it just, yeah, it's pretty fabulous as well. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm so, I can't, I, I used to read so many books all the time and I just feel like I can't, my brain won't let me right now. It's like yeah. so wired for the season or something. I don't know, but. The holidays are stressful. Like I, I find this time of year, my brain tends to kind of, I tend to get into really fluffy books and I can't tend to focus on really in-depth stuff because there's so much going on in terms of like this weekend alone like last night there was a tree lighting which made me feel very hallmark like standing in my small time waiting for the lights to turn on and then tonight is a parade and then tomorrow night the tree that's headed to boston is making a stop in amherst but it's it's so much stuff like after the last couple of years where there wasn't really anything that you were going out and doing like this whole idea of venturing out and like actually again feels a bit overwhelming right like i it does give my brain some TLC this time of year, you know, like it's kind mm-hmm. of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do that. Um, oh, and yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention to anyone who hasn't checked it out, um, Sarah also has an amazing coven slumber oh, party. Yeah. Podcast. I, I love candles for my chat because I like to Aww, like candles thank you. Lives, and I was like, yes, I need to do that one. I was just listening to your most recent episode earlier. Um, I think what's it called? Um, Planchettes and pizza, sl- pizza slices yes. with yes. Um, Ray from Black Heart Arts, right? Yep. Black Heart um, Arts, yep. Yeah. So, um, how did you get started with the podcast and what was your inspiration for that? I mean, I know it's Dr. Pepper and Cheese Pizza and <laughs> that, which is like yeah. nostalgia, 100%. I love it. But how oh, did yeah. that start? Yeah, because it's fabulous. Yeah. Um, so it, it had a couple reasons that it started. So Ray, who is the artist of Black Heart Arts, um, she and I have been friends for a long time. And oh, we used to hang out and have, I'm, an, I'm not going to say some slumber parties, but like, mm-hmm. you know, order pizza, do the thing, watch ghost shows. Yeah. And it was so much fun. And then COVID happened. And so I didn't see her a lot. Mm-hmm. And I knew she was focused on work and I was focused on work. So we were like, hey, we both focus on work. Let's make a work where we are together. Oh, I and then we can hang out. So, That's so we started the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other reason for me, at least, was because I'm kind of um, like introverted and don't really talk to folks yeah. a lot, even in the store. Like, I'm usually the one hanging back doing the back end stuff and yeah and this little sort of thing and um so I have all this stuff that I want to be able to add from like books or experience um but there wasn't really a forum to do that because no one ever heard me talking so they were like oh you know yeah. uh, I want to hear from somebody you know I want advice from the person that talks or whatever so I was yeah. like not that I need to give advice or whatever, but I wanted to kind of have a way that I could articulate some stuff that I thought people might care about yeah. um, or relate to. And That's so that was kind of what we came up with the podcast. Mm-hmm. So we kind of, you know, talk about movies that we love or the last episode was of course about slumber parties and like the value of slumber parties really. And that was super fun. So. Oh, that's mm-hmm. amazing. Oh, I love it so much. And that's where a lot of folks start with tarot and oracle anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Sleep oh, my gosh. I, was just talking. I have a friend in Halifax that I meet up with every couple of weeks to chat about tarot. We actually met through a meetup group in Halifax at the Halifax Public Library. And then when COVID hit, we just went online and then we ended up moving. And so it ended up working out. And yeah. there used to be more members of the group. Now it's just her and I. But um, we were talking about that and she was talking about we have another book club group with a few other people about how, you know, she started with seances and all of that kind of stuff when she was a kid and like spirit boards and all of that kind of stuff. And it's like, a yeah. you know, school with slumber parties. I was, I was um, a school reject all through school and was bullied. So I only have like a handful of like slumber party memories and they're not particularly great, but I feel like I need to like reset that and maybe just like have a slumber party with my kids one night and bring all their sleeping bags down to the living room and just like reset that button for my, for myself and like yes. pizza and like have Dr. Pepper or root beer or whatever it is and just like have fun with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to reclaim that magic for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. And you're, you've done quite a few of them, right? You're up to episode 15 right now? Yeah, episode 15 was our last. We started doing it monthly uh, when we first started. But <laughs> what's that? 
Oh, Johanna said, and me, absolutely. absolutely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, oh, yeah, no, uh, but of course, life gets in the way, so monthly turned mm -hmm. into whenever we can. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we're still active in doing it and, you know, yeah. talking behind the scenes about episodes and that sort of thing, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so episode 15 we got two, at least two episodes lined up that we're going to record soon as well so oh, well, that's yeah. amazing. oh i love it i yeah. noticed you have one on practical magic which is one of my all-time favorite movies and i can't wait to yes. listen to it because that's amazing oh, yeah. um we love that I one I, um yeah i love that movie so much um yeah i know what you mean about that because i set up my website and i've got a blog and stuff but i i was planning to send out my newsletter like monthly and yeah, it hasn't quite turned out that way, like between, yeah. you know, COVID and July and then long-term fatigue and then getting this weird yep. like, seasonal cold. Like, it, my best intentions, like when I had a food blog, I was sending stuff out every single week. And right. now it's like, I'm lucky if I can get it out every month. And like, I want to be more, you know, but life gets in the way and life gets life does. And it's kind of, I find my bandwidth post COVID for pushing myself to like do these things is much less than it used to be, which is kind yeah. of interesting. I think that's true for a lot of people. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to actually touch base too about, you have some really amazing seasonal stuff on offer right now. Like your, um, yeah. And I just wanted to, to kind of profile that as well. Like yeah. I was on your seasonal offerings page last night and uh -huh. ordered a few things, including the crystal advent calendar, which can I just yeah. say how, I am about that. That's amazing. How did that come together? Um, yeah, we actually sold out of them today. We had 50 and oh. we were just like it blown away, blown away. Um, well, we started when I did because I was debating and I was like, no, I'm going to go for it. And I'm yes. <laughs> yeah. And we kind of felt bad that they ended up selling so fast, but we were so blown away. We did not expect that at all. Um, That's last amazing. year we made 20. It was the first year that we did it now. Yeah. We kind of did it because, well, for us personally, Advent calendars are pretty secular and just celebratory. <laughs> like, we don't really adopt the, like, more religious aspects behind that. Yeah. To us, yeah. it's just more of a fun way that no matter what you're celebrating, you can kind of have a surprise yeah. during, the, during the season. And so we kind of had fun with them before this. Like, prior to this, you know, you get the chocolate ones or what yeah. have you. And we were like, you know, this is a great way that we could – kind of put our wall of stones in a like reasonable package yeah. where you get all that information and that sort of thing so we kind of played around with that idea and we started collecting the stones pretty early on for this year last year it was yeah. kind of like more of a experiment to see how it would go and then this year we started building them like really early on and mm -hmm. uh it was it was so fun designing the packaging too like oh, yeah. it was it was it was fun um yeah so that's how it came about we were just like what's a way that we could celebrate the season um and kind of encourage people to buy local because of course like the holiday season is so important to small business it's just so huge. That huge it can like really make or break a lot of businesses right yeah. so uh, we try and make a focus for that and this was just kind of a fun way that we could kind of do something that was signature to us but allow mm -hmm. people to kind of still celebrate local especially if they were kind of um custom regular customers it was a way that they could kind of connect with the shop people would come in and buy them as gifts that sort of thing yeah. so so that's how it came about um one of our one of the, the gals that works with us brought it up, I think, last mm -hmm. year. And last year we had an assembly line at the store. It got a little chaotic. So we, we found a new strategy for it. But, yeah. yeah, we were really stoked about that. And it went over really well, which we're super grateful for. <laughs> well, I cannot wait. Uh, we had actually picked up, last time we were through Churro, we stopped at Bulk Barn. Because that's one mm -hmm. of the things we don't have locally here. Um, and picked up the move free advent calendars. Johanna had actually told us about them last year, which is a great option. Um, and so then last night I'm like, so Dominic, um, can I get myself a crystal advent calendar? He's like, yeah, sure. But then I get all your chocolate. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm not giving you a fair I'm going to have both, but, um, <laughs> it's so funny, but there's like, I'm much more a fan of Yule and Samhain and, and Halloween than I am about Christmas. Like there's a lot yeah. of baggage for me with, with sure. Christmas 
So I much prefer to focus on like the Yule celebration. Of course, I do Christmas with my kids and everything. Yeah. But for me, like it's all about this habit and all of that. And so, but there's something about that ritual of like opening up the little box every day and like taking out your little chocolate or in this case, crystals. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, and that, that it's about the ritual and the tradition, right? Like for me, exactly. all the days is less about the gifting and more about the traditions of music and, you know, baking yes. the kids and like peppermint hot chocolate or peppermint mocha or like, those flavor, totally. flavors of the season, right? So I'm just yes. so excited. Um, and with your Yule offerings, you also have that 12 Days of Christmas by a uh, local Cape Breton. Yeah. Um, and illustrator. I yeah. Um, and I might have to add that to my order because it's absolutely stunning. We have the Canadian 12 Days of Christmas, which is, of course, all like hockey pucks. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah the artwork is absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, I know. Yeah. We have a lot of books with, uh, what's the, uh, Brianna Core Scott is the artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a lot, I'm just going to put this back crappily yeah. for now. But okay. yeah, like, this one, just like oh, so many. That's beautiful. beautiful. There's some more too. I mean, it's just, it's so inspiring looking. The art right? style is just gorgeous. <laughs> We haven't yes. bought a Christmas book for a really long time. So, yes, I'll definitely be adding that to my order because I love the artwork. And it's so nice to have things that you can come back to and reference every year. Like, I totally. still have them in that cracker book that I remember reading with my brother when we were very small. And I probably should have given it to him because he was, like, the Nutcracker fan. But I have it. And I love it. And the art style, it just kind of brings me back to that, like, warm and cozy feeling. And I really want yeah. to create that for my kids, right? I love that you're carrying it. Um, and that it's a local mm -hmm. Nova Scotia product. Like, you're really fantastic about carrying local creators. Like, I know there's mm -hmm. the Modern Music, but you carry a lot of their candles. Yeah, yeah. And you also have, there's a new line of candles that you carry that's, like, Thor's Magic and then, like, the Horned God, like, all the different colored yeah. candles. That 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 we have any left, even. But, yeah, that's Sea Siren Charms. They're yeah, on Instagram yeah. too. Yeah, oh, nice. and then these candles are. I don't know if you can see. There we go. Horseman's oh, Her. Which is amazing. She does amazing stuff too. I love and the yeah. trees. Yeah, yeah, just so cool. And then we have more yeah. of her stuff over here too. You can see, sort yeah. of like, just oh, yeah. yeah. If you want like chime candles, but like yeah. yeah. Very oh, nice stuff. Much. Yeah, she yeah. does brilliant stuff. And she's uh, I'm gonna get it wrong. I want to say in Cape Breton, but anyway, relatively yeah. local in Nova Scotia. Yeah, which yes, is still yeah. very very local. Yeah, I love that you yeah. feature so many local artists in the products that you do. And you guys yeah, also super proud have, of them all. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, it's incredible. And you also have a brand new candle bar that you set up, right? Where you can do it. Yeah. I've got candles. my coffee and other things all over it right now, but <laughs> I will circle around so you can kind of yeah. see. Yeah. So that's our candle bar. So basically, um, the gals that work at the shop are really into candle magic. It is one of the ones that I prefer too. Um, mm -hmm. This is some work that they've done already here. Cool. But I was uh, in last. Yeah, it was a good way for them to kind of uh, be able to exercise their skills yeah. and, and kind of personalize it, too, which was yeah. the, the inspiration well, there's behind it. There's something so special about a, being able to get something that's created just for you with a specific intention. Like, there's so much power behind that. And I yeah. love that you set up the candle bar because that's such a beautiful way to bring that in. And also, like you said allow the folks that work for you that that's their area of expertise to really exercise that and show yeah. their creativity and that's incredible i'm so excited yeah. to, to figure one out eventually um and then um yeah and you also i i've been a huge fan of your sabbat crafting with stephanie like each of the sabbats um she's been hosting incredible crafting classes and stuff is really creative yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's amazing. So how did that start? Like, um, cause I know she it's, works at Falling Corners. She does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so Steph is very, um, she's a mom of two and that's mm-hmm. really important for her to integrate like the Sabbaths into her like teaching with her kids yeah. and stuff like that. So she was already very, um, like in celebration of all the Sabbaths and very educated yeah. on those. And she was trying to find a way to, um, be able to share that right um and just teaching the information about it is kind of it's part of it but she wanted to be able to celebrate it with people which is where the crafting came in and so i can't remember when we started doing it i feel like it was after covid um it worked better for us because we were able to um help her by producing it but our shop was so small and at the time um especially with covid we couldn't have a lot of folks working here all the time like on crafts or or during workshops so it was a great way for them to be able to access the stuff and what and it is you know whether or not they actually need to be there at the time the class is is kind of irrelevant because you have the replay and you have the the stuff so even if you can't make it um it doesn't really matter you can still participate and that sort of thing so Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I did the Samhain one and I made this and it's, I love it nice. so much. So uh, good. Yeah. She's so creative with the crafts that she comes up with for the Sabbath. Yeah, absolutely. I love it so much. I always look forward to them because, and it's so good. nice that even though I'm an hour away, I can still participate because yeah, yeah no, it's absolutely exactly. amazing. Really, really yeah. Cool. And then it's just nice because at, if you do show up for the class, of course, you know, you have the, um, mm-hmm. kind of live chat at the end that you can choose to participate in or not so people can see each other and mm-hmm. and that sort of thing, which is nice yeah no it's amazing I wasn't able to make the last one sadly but it I look forward to them so much it's amazing um yeah. so then I also noticed on your website and I wanted to ask you about um you have a coming soon for learn with us tarot guide so tell me more about that yeah so that is still coming soon so basically um when we were setting up the new website i was um getting some assistance from a really really great friend of mine who's so good at that sort of stuff and she's like well what kind of stuff do you want to like share and so i was telling her the things i wanted to share and that was kind of concisely what it ended up being was the tarot guide and um also information about crystals and so i've been kind of brainstorming how i want to present that information because of course i have so much written on my own just in Mm -hmm. my computer in the annals of my computer honestly just like i have to dig through to find it but i was really kind of thinking about that over the last few months actually because it's been a while since it's like coming soon um and i was like you know my ideally ideally what i could do if i could do anything is have people that do tarot Mm -hmm. talk about their favorite cards for it so i was actually going to reach out to you and like some other folks that like are really great readers and like really connected with tarot and kind of share some of their things and hopefully be able to kind of construct it in a way that like features them um but also educates on particular cards so that's my goal oh, I love that. and so hopefully hopefully that'll kind of uh, manifest itself um in early next year but we'll see yeah oh, that's incredible that's- yeah i only noticed it today actually i've been on your website a billion times but i just noticed it as i was going through because i wanted to reference like when you first opened like i had a general yeah. idea but in preparation for a chat and i was like hold up what's this i'm so yeah. excited to see because that's it's such a great idea. And I love that on the website, like you have a learn more section and then yeah. whole repertoire of books that are available. And I know that what you have on the website is like a small selection of what you have in store, which yeah. is incredible, but I'm really impressed by how much you've added to it actually. Like there's a range and for anyone who's interested to or in ordering anything, I, you ship to Canada and the U S right. We do. And we can ship, yeah. we ship other places, but they have to do it by email. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, shipping costs are ridiculous to Canada. Yeah. Post. But yeah. I have to say, like, it's incredible to have a metaphysical shop based in Canada to access decks and books and other things from because so much of it is through the states and then you're paying duties and, yes. and everything else. Like, I love yeah. um, Shop the Eighth House in now they were in New Jersey, now they're in, I think, Philly. Um, okay. Sarah yeah. has 
this this is an incredible book as well. It's Magic in Real Life, and Sarah goes through basically all of the different um, zodiac signs, and she's got like kitchen witchin and um, a deep dive into each of the um, different zodiac signs and the corresponding planets and um, cards, and I mean it's it's a fabulous resource. But I find when I order from her, I have to be very strategic because shipping is more expensive and then you know all of the rest of it totally. so that's all to say that i'm so grateful that you are here and that you have you. Such a wide range of things because it's really handy as a canadian to be able to access something semi-locally well for me it's very local but even for someone yeah. in bc to be able to access that which is really totally really yeah yeah we try and be as accessible as possible with that kind of stuff and she's a great resource i do i follow her on instagram so yeah yeah, yeah very knowledgeable yeah yes yeah definitely but um, yeah. That's yeah um so i'm just trying to think yeah because we talked about your um podcast podcast yeah it's on youtube right the um yeah, so you can access it from our website if you want to li uh, listen to <laughs> episodes there. You can. Um, but we're also, like, just on any sort of uh, place that you want to listen to podcasts, like Spotify, yes. Apple Music, or Apple Podcasts, I think it is, that sort of stuff. But it is on YouTube, too, so you can certainly listen there, too. It's on the Calling Corners YouTube channel, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Totally. Amazing. And that's where so our show cool. notes are. So if we reference show yeah. notes, you go to the, yeah. Oh, fantastic. I didn't realize yep. you had a show. That's fabulous. Yep. Yeah, that's really, really great. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I think that was everything that I had questions about. Um, yeah, so if folks are interested in finding you, it's www.callingcorners.com and then True. Calling Corners on Instagram and you also have the YouTube. Are there any other socials that you're on um, Facebook as well, right? We're on Facebook. Uh, we do have, we are Calling Corners on Twitter, but to be honest, Instagram and Facebook cover it. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I haven't ever set up a Twitter account. Um, I found even just keeping up with Instagram has been plenty. I'm not on Facebook anymore. So it's like, yeah, um, stimulation overload if I try. Like I'm on Discord, but I don't tend to hop on there very often because it just feels like a lot to have multiple socials. <laughs> it does. And Discord's yeah. kind of its own journey in itself. I just got yeah. that too and i'm just like how do i just reg how do i just talk to people like how do i just no. generally talk to people it's, <laughs> it's a challenge it's like, like all these groups and then like subgroups but i find it's just it's so much to try and keep up with all of it and i'm a bit of a completed yeah. i feel like i need to like read all the messages and finally i just kind of gave up and took a step back i'm like i can't do it yeah we have um, a 2s lgbtqia plus group that i just started up with a local cafe owner um from art of eating and so we meet up um every friday now and it's just local folks and get together and like last um thursday we went out for dinner for someone's birthday and we've got lots of stuff so i'm on there a little more regularly because of that group but i usually just like sneak on and see what the updates are on there and then like yeah out again and i have to keep reminding myself to check because i haven't made it a regular thing to like hop on there so yeah yeah but uh it's it makes me group. feel young to be on discord i'm not gonna lie makes me feel yeah. like i'm kind of hip with the kids <laughs> like i know right like my, my 13 and 14 year old well almost 15 actually are on there with me because they're part of the group as well um right. and i'm just like yeah i i feel so old now having teenagers it's just like <laughs> i remind it so regularly how not right great that's what they're supposed to be doing at this point right but it's just it's mm -hmm. funny yeah oh my gosh sure. well at least you're on discord that makes that makes you young yes. and hip i hope because that's what young i'm hip. assuming about myself <laughs> yes i i fully assume that i'm gonna you know go with it until i'm told otherwise so right <laughs> totally, totally. That's awesome. well thank you so much for joining me it was an absolute my pleasure, pleasure. 
Yeah, for anyone who hasn't had the chance to either drop in online or in person in Truro, Sarah's shop is absolutely incredible. I still remember the first yeah. time I found out about your shop because I was talking to Joe and she's like, oh yeah, Mike's cousin has this awesome shop in Truro. It's like metaphysical. I think it'd be right up your alley. I was like, so I stopped in with Nadine and Mike and that was like my first time. I think that was the first time we met. I, I feel like it yeah. was back maybe summer of, I, I want to say 2017. I think it was like a year before we moved here or maybe before right. that. Or, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so exciting. I'm like, really? She does? That's amazing. Yes, please. And it was, yeah, so that was very exciting. But uh, definitely stop in either online or in person because it's utterly fabulous and wonderful. Thank and you. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for chatting. This was really fun. Oh, my goodness. It was my absolute pleasure. I'm so glad we were able to coordinate it. This has been uh, so much fun. Awesome. Well, hopefully well, I'll see you soon. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Car rental coming up and I'm sure we're going to try and explore some holiday themed stuff. Maybe Sackville, possibly Moncton and definitely Truro. Wow. So, uh, nice, nice. So, okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, good. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much and I enjoy thank the rest you. of your weekend. Yeah. You too. Take care, Jules. Um, you too. Bye.